Hey, Shalom family, Most High in Christ blessed. This is Officer Mike Judah, IUIC Dallas. This is Casting Down Idols. Today we're going to cast down an idol, Ty Lok. All right? So first we're going to start with this overview. Let's read this article. One of the oldest and most widely worshipped Mesoamerican gods, Ty Lok, was the Aztec god of rain and thunder. It was by his blessings that the seasonal rains arrived on time for the vital maize harvest. So our Northern Kingdom brothers, they worship this deity for rain. He was supposed to be a seasonal God that brought rain. Let's go to the next article. Let's read that. Tylok is the God of rain in Aztec religion. He was also a deity of earthly fertility and water, worshiped as a giver of life and sustenance. He was feared for his power over hail, thunder, lightning. So Tlaloc was revered for his earthly fertility, water. He was, a worsh he was worshipped as a giver of life substance. We're bringing in the, the summer solstice, we call it Shipantla. And what we're doing is we're praying for rain, and this time the season, we, do, we start working on our, on our uh, crops, the, the, the crops that feed us. So we, we pray for this rain that we can uh, we'll be plentiful. So we're going to dispel all of these um, things that Northern Kingdom revered about Tlaloc. He talking about he was had power over hell, thunder, and lightning. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is Moses talking to the children of Israel after the exodus out of Egypt. He told us if we don't keep the commandments of God, that curses would happen to us, right? Let's read one of these commandments. Go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. Read 1 through 4, and then we're coming right back to Deuteronomy. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What God say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image hmm. or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them uh -huh. nor serve them. Uh -huh. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, Read. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the Most High God said, we are not to have no other gods before him. Don't make no graven images, wood and stone. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I want you to read for me verse 64. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. This is the curse. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people mm -hmm. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. See the image of wood carvings of Tylok. This is one of the... Graven images, the wood carvings that the Most High told us not to do of these idols. Go to the next image. Stone. A big stone image of Tylok. That in the Mesoamericas that they worship. Mesoamerica means the southern parts of the United States in the southern America. Mesoamerican. All right. Let's go to um, the Wikipedia page. Pre-Hispanic cultures are thought to have become extinct once the Spanish had completed the colonization of Mexico. Once the Spanish did what? Completed the colonization of Mexico. Okay. 
Aspects of pre-Hispanic cultures continue to influence Mexican culture. Read that part again. Aspects of pre-Hispanic cultures continue to influence Mexican culture. It continues to influence Mexican culture. So one thing we want to understand is these idols still, deter still are detrimental to our people today. Read on. Accordingly, Taloc has continued to be represented in Mexican culture even after the Spanish were thought to have completed evangelizing in Mexico. Mm -hmm. In fact, even as the Spanish were beginning to proselytize in Mexico, religious Secret, secretism uh, syncretisms was occurring. Mm -hmm. An analyst of Analyst. Analysts of, evangel of evangelizations, plays put on by the Spanish in order to convert the indigenous peoples to Christianity, suggest that the Spanish might have unknowingly created connections between Christianity and indigenous religions. Figures such as Taloc, indigenous Mexicans viewing these plays might have made connections between the sacrifice Abraham. The what? between the sacrifice Abraham was willing to make of Isaac. Uh-huh. So they made connections between the worship of these idols to the sacrifice that Abraham was willing to make of his son Isaac. Read on. To the sacrifice to the sacrifices that were made to Talok and other deities. Mm -hmm. These connections have may have allowed indigenous peoples to retain ideas about sacrifice even as they were being forcibly converted to Christianity. As they was being what? Even as they were being forcibly converted to Christianity. As our people were being forcibly converted to Christianity, they were mingling the idols with the religion that they was teaching the people. Read on. Early uh, syncretism, early syncretism between indigenous religious religions and Christianity also included more direct connections to Talok. Mm -hmm. Some churches built during the 16th century, such as the Santiago Tala Tala Just Loco, say, do your best. <laughs> Tala Loco, Loco right. Church had stones depicting Talok with the interior of the church. So the churches started to put stone images in there of Tylo. Read. Even as the Roman Catholic Church sought to eradicate indigenous religions, traditions, depiction of Tylo still remain within worship spaces. All right, we're going to stop right there. Now I want the article, the image first of the, give me the article about sacrifice. While his reign often brought life to Mesoamerican societies, they could also take it away if they arrived at the wrong time or came in the form of intense storms. The rains could ruin crops and cause drought or flooding. Talok is one of several gods the, Me the Mexica people refused to fully abandon following the introduction of Christianity. Mm. And, and in many ways, his... Uh, Veneration was never completely forsaken. Remember the article we read prior. While they were colonizing them, they were mixing the idolatry into the, the religion that they was teaching. Until this day, Mexican people refused to fully abandon the following introduction of Christianity. And in many ways, his veneration was never completely forsaken. Tylock was intertwined into their religions that they were um, being forced to worship. Now let's go to uh, read that right quick. What did the Aztecs do for Talok? Mm -hmm. In worship of Talok, the Aztecs would also present him with human sacrifices. In worship of Talok, remember it said that they would mingle that with Abraham's sacrifice of his son Isaac. They would use some of these idols um, to attach it to our biblical history so they would never fully abandon it. Read it again. In worship of Talok, the Aztecs would also present him with human sacrifices, 
usually of children. Mm -hmm. Like many sacrifices, the children would have their hearts torn from their chest while it was still beating. Give me the image. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 106 and verse 34. Okay. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, mm -hmm. but were mingled amongst the heathen Read. and learned their works. Mm -hmm. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Mm -hmm. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. What were they doing? They sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. So when we were going into the, the promised land, the Lord told us to get rid of all the nations. So one of the customs that we learned was idolatry. We learned to worship their gods. And still today, Aztecs, Mesoamericans, they still follow other nations. And now instead of sacrificing their children on temples like that, we go to the abortion clinics. Still today. They sacrificed to Tylock. Now read on. Verse 38. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, mm -hmm. whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And the land was polluted with blood. Right. So just like the article we read before, how they ripped the hearts from their children while they were still beating, they sacrificed the innocent blood to Tylock. Read on. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Mm -hmm. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people uh -huh. in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen mm -hmm. and they that hated them ruled over them. Hence the colonization, the Spaniards coming in and uh, colonizing the, the northern kingdom of America. The Most High was angry with us for doing things like sacrificing our children to Talok. All right? Now, let's go back to that article. Talok is the god of rain in Aztec religion. He was also a deity of earthly fertility and water, worshipped as a giver of life and, su and sustenance. And he life and sustenance. Go ahead. He was feared for his power over hell, thunder, lightning. So now we're about to dispel all of these things that Tylok was revered for. They said he was the God of rain. Let's go to Job chapter 28 and start at verse 23. This is the book of Job chapter 28 and verse 23. Uh-huh. God understandeth the way thereof, yeah. and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heavens, mm -hmm. to make the weight for the winds. Uh -huh. And he weighed the waters by measure. So he weighed the waters by measure. Now watch this. Read. When he made a decree for the rain. What did he do? When he made a decree for the rain. The Lord, the Lord made a decree of order for rain. Go ahead. And a way for the lightning of the thunder. Then... Did he see it and he, and declared it? He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. So the, we're going to deal with the rain part. The Most High made a law for rain. Now let's go to Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4 and verse 7. It's the book of Amos chapter 4 and verse 7. And also I have withholding the rain from you. What the Lord say? And also, I have withholding the rain from you. <laughs> hey, no rock can do that, northern kingdom. Read on. When there were yet three months to, har to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city. What? And I caused it to rain upon one city. And what else? And caused it not to rain upon another city. The Lord gave the decree for the rain. He caused it to rain on one city and not to rain on another city. A rock and a graven image of wood can't do that. Am I right? That's right. All right. Let's, uh, now we're going to address the thunder and the lightning that they say that Tylok is revered for. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 18. It's the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 18. Read. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet 
and the mountain smoking. And when the Go ahead. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. So this is the people that wanna the uh the Israelites wanna go and talk to God in place of Moses. Right? So let's read on. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Why? Read on. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before you, I mean before your faces, that ye sin not. Mm -hmm. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with, with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. So the people said they seen God speaking with Moses. Read verse 18 again. Verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings. Mm. And the so when the people saw the thundering and the lightning, that was God speaking to Moses. Mm. Let's go to John, the book of John, chapter 12. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. All right, see, so this is Christ talking to the disciples before he is about to um, be crucified. Let's jump to verse 29. 28. Uh-huh. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the Most High God responded to Christ while he was saying, Father, glorify thy name. Read, watch this. Read on. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. What they say when they heard God's voice? The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. So that ain't Tylock controlling that. That's the most high God talking. Every time he talks, that's thunder. You understand? All right. So now we're going to deal with this hell. Let's go back to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 9 and verse 18. We're going to power read. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain. A very grievous hell, mm -hmm. such as had not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Read. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them, and they shall die. So we're dealing with the hell. The Most High God say, I'm going to cause it the hell, a grievous hell. Jump to verse 23. Verse 23. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hell, mm -hmm. and, the, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hell upon the land of Egypt. Read. So there was hell and fire mingled with the hell. Hell and what? Hell and fire mingled with the hell, Read. very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. So the Most High God made rain and hell, fire, mingle together. He controls that, not a, a, a rock called Tylock, and it ain't no wood image looking like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> What that thing look like, man, a bird or something? Northern Kingdom, y'all got to come out of these idolatries. Let's go to earthly fertility. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. Genesis chapter 31 and verse 1. 1 and 31. I mean 1 and 31, excuse me. Yes, sir. And God saw everything that he, that he had made, mm -hmm. and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Uh, go to verse 28. Hold on. What do I want? Genesis. Go to verse 28. Start at 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, 
and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in which is the, the fruit of, of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. All right, so that's dealing with the earthly fertility. God created man and told man to multiply, created every herb, bearing seed, and then multiplied. God controls earthly fertility. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. It repented God that he made them. He is the giver of life. Let's go to um, Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 3. Because now we're going to deal with sustenance. Sustenance is stability, what stabilizes you, right? Let's read Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 3. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the, from the belly which are created from the womb, and even to your old age. So I, the Most High God said, you are born from me from the belly even to your old age. God sustains you from the time you come out the womb until you reach an old age. Is that it? I am he, and even to, to hoary hairs will I carry you. Even to an old age where you have hoary hairs on your head, God sustains you. And let's see how he sustains us. Go to Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I commanded you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, mm -hmm. that I will give you the rain of your land in, due, in his due season, Read. the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. The corn, the wine, and oil, food, nourishment, things that you need to sustain yourself. Read. And I will send grass in thy field for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Send the grass in the field for your cattle, because your cattle is what gives you the meat, the dairy. These things sustain you. Read on. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and mm -hmm. worship them. Don't be deceived in thinking that Tyloke is giving you rain to sustain your animals, to grow your crops. Don't be deceived because a colonizer came in and taught you something different. And now you making a stone to worship an idol that he blended in with your religion that he taught you. Read on. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. Then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you. That's why you don't have your land today. Read. And he shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit. Mm -hmm. At least ye perish quickly from off the the good land which the Lord giveth you. Yeah, because you're not in your homeland. And when you came to the, the fourth part of the earth, this land was the promised land for you that God promised your forefathers, and the, the colonizer came and took that from you. Read on. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart mm -hmm. and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand. When it means to bind them for a sign upon your hand, that means to perform these commandments. Read that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. That means you're supposed to be meditating on these commandments, frontlets between your eyes, read. And ye shall teach them your children, mm. speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, 
when thou liest down and when thou sittest and when thou risest up. Read. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates. Read. That, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So if you keep the commandments and don't follow these idols like Talok, God said that he would give you heaven on earth, sustain you. Now let's go, last scripture, Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 6. All right, read. The book of Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God. So we're saying to you, northern kingdom brothers, thus says the Lord your God. Read. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. So we're saying turn away from worship in Tylock. Turn away from this abomination so the house of Israel can be healed and we can get salvation. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Nation is men leading by example. 